execution. And I think one of the, uh, you know, the number one things that CEOs do and founders do is build great teams. Uh, and without teams, you can't succeed. So you know, a couple of cliches. One I like is, um, you know, your first 15 to 20 people to find the culture for the rest of the, co for the rest of the company's life. Chantal, what do you think? Um, yes, the first 15. And no is an acceptable answer. Um, the first 15 people depends on how long they're, they're there. <laughs> um, it's, there was someone I, I heard speak at the very first, one of my investors is, is first round capital and they do this annual event. And I remember we had closed um, right in January around the time. I don't know if anyone else has the same. Well, we can't have the same. You've probably been to those events. Um, this, this woman got up and spoke about the different stages of a company. And we had literally were 30 days in and I was there with my, my VP of sales. And she said, if you just closed and you're in that series A, she's like, whoever's in your company right now will probably not be there in two years. And I was like, oh my God. And I'm sitting there next to this person being like, are you going to be there? Like, <laughs> this is crazy. Um, and she is no longer there. So that's kind of interesting. But um, it's, you know, you have these different stages where you're sort of scaling the, the team. And it also depends on like, what do you need at that point in time? What's the skill set that you need? So while you say it can define the culture, I think it can to a certain extent, but it also depends on who are the core leaders of your team because it, it does in fact happen with that leadership team and at what point you know, are you layering on, I guess, what you consider executives, which I'm just now, I mean, I feel like we've been doing this for, for 10 years and it's been a little over three really and I'm just now building on that C-level executive team, which again will continue to define the culture of your business. So you have to just be really careful that you set, for me, I set values that are really important to me. And every single person that we bring on board has to in some way represent these three values of the company. And they weren't things that I had initially even thought about. I didn't know like, oh, I'm going to build Colleen Isabel and here are the values of Colleen Isabel. I actually discovered these because they were the reasons we let people go because they didn't have these things. So it really happened for me over time. Um, and now I, I feel like I can say we have an incredibly strong culture that represents exactly what I would have envisioned. Right. And just to keep going with that, because I think you've all scaled companies and it's hard to keep that culture as you scale. So how do you guys, how, is, that, is that part of a strategy? Is there an operational plan around keeping the culture of a company? How do you work on that inside of the businesses? Anybody? Uh, so it's, it's super important at Yodel and, and I believe culture starts at the top. The CEO sets the tone. All the exec team has to kind of follow suit. And so, yeah, there's a, we, we hire based on it. We fire based on it. You know, one of the things I say in orientation, you know, one of our values is treat people with respect. Uh, and that means intellectual respect. That means, you know, just courtesy types of respect. And, you know, when, when you talk about that, people don't believe it. But when you fire the guy who's the A-plus performer but who's a complete jerk, all of a sudden be like, wow, these guys are serious about this and it influences it. So you, you, you've got to be able to do that. Um, you know, we do awards based on it. We do promotions. Like when someone gets promoted, it's because they did a good job and they live the Yodel values. And so you absolutely, in, in my opinion, have to be conscious about it. Uh, I think the other thing is, you know, people oftentimes I think hire for skills. So when I, I came in, our VCs had hired a head of sales because he had run a 800 person sales force. And not only was that the wrong thing for us when we were a 20 person company, you know, he didn't know how to do anything without a 10 person sales operations team. You know, the whole sales force was only 10 people. And so getting someone who can get the job done, but who, you know, sets the right cultural tone is, is super important. Uh, so you, you mentioned firing and, you know, unfortunately part of growing a company is figuring out who's not going to grow with you. Right. And so, um, I think people in the room would probably be interested to think about how you guys think about it, the unfortunate side of things, which is sometimes people have to be let go. Uh, so how do you approach that? What are some tips you can give folks on the best way to, to, to take care of that hard part of the, of the model? Maybe Brian, go for it. Well, that's right. Uh, well, I think the, um, I think AppNexus has been fortunate to fire some of the best executives in New York. I think we might have the best track record of firing. Um, I'm proud of that. Um, and I think just to echo, you know, what Chantel and, and Court both said is that just because you're a really smart, talented executive doesn't necessarily mean that you're a great fit for a business at the stage it's at. And so I think for us, for me personally, one of the biggest challenges of, of growing up Nexus is this is the largest company I've ever worked for uh, and has been for about the last 
300 people, 400 people. It's really hard when you know your first day on the job managing a 625-person company um, is your first day, you know, <laughs> this week. Uh, last week was my first week managing a 620-person company, um, and I think that hiring executives to scale as fast as a company like AppNexus has been very difficult because I don't know what it looks like. What is a great, um, you know, president for an aspiring ad tech company look like? I have absolutely no idea. And in fact, when we hired Michael Rubenstein five years ago, I said, what does a president do? Like, what, what do you expect this to mean? I mean, what, what, what in the world do we need a president for? We have a CEO. Well, he doesn't wear sandals with orange painted toes. That's a one. <laughs> You'd be surprised. Um, but I think we were very fortunate that Michael has been extraordinary. Um, and I do think, though, that as we've gone forward, we've hired people who haven't been able to make the transition through our growth. Uh, and that's been hard. And that usually leads to them either quitting or being fired. Um, we've brought in people into roles that no longer made sense for the company. So if you look at our org chart over the past seven years, just to incorporate going from two people to 600 people, um, you can imagine that that org chart changes almost every year, um, sometimes more often than that, uh, to incorporate the growth of what we want to do. And um, so I think for me, the hard part is that I really like and believe in almost every single person at AppNexus, and that's always been true. We've never hired someone that I didn't personally like, um, that I interviewed at least, uh, or that I didn't think could do the job. And so it's really difficult to then wake up one morning and say, you know, this just isn't working. And those tough conversations ideally come after weeks or months of, of talking to the person in question about their role, their performance, their fit. Um, there have been a couple of times where there's been an you know, extraordinary circumstance, and that's usually around culture and values, where someone does something that I just can't live with. Um, you know, the only time I can think of where I fired someone on the spot um, was when we were very early under an immense amount of stress and I said to this particular employee, if you do that again, I will fire you. And he did it again immediately. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm like, okay, I'm sorry, you're fired. Like I just, I, you know, I gave you a warning. Like you can't do it immediately again. Um, now that I have a daughter who's almost five, I recognize this behavior. Um, <laughs> so that's the only time. Now I'm really good at it. I give her timeouts like instantly. If you do that again, you're on timeout. Um, I learned that from being a CEO, so.